Over half a century ago, the United States and the Soviet Union gripped the world in a daring race to the moon, defining a space age that inspired generations. But that legendary race was only the beginning. Today, a new, far more ambitious competition is underway. The U.S., Russia, and now China aren't just trying to return to the moon, they're racing to build permanent bases there. And the risks? They're bigger than ever, far beyond what we saw during Apollo. Representing the U.S., Elon Musk recently stunned NASA and its rivals with a bold plan to build Moonbase Alpha, a strategic move to keep America ahead in the most ambitious space race of our time. So, how exactly will SpaceX turn this vision into reality? Let's dive in on today's episode of Alpha Tech. After some time in the political spotlight, Elon Musk is back where he belongs, at Starbase, focused on what really matters, upgrading Starship, planning moon missions, and pushing toward Mars. All of that came into sharp focus in a recent presentation. But what truly stood out? Musk's renewed vision, building a permanent base on the moon. It's not just bold, it's essential. The moon is our closest testing ground. Close enough to manage, far enough to push our limits. And the numbers say it all. The moon? About 225,000 miles away. Mars? Try over 34 million. A journey that takes six to eight months, loaded with risk, complexity, and cost. Before we take on Mars, we've got to prove we can survive and thrive off Earth. Uh, but uh, anyway, we should have a moon base alpha, which is the next step after the Apollo program. After all, we've inherited rocket technology from the Saturn V era, like the legendary F-1 engines that once carried astronauts to the moon. But going back just to repeat Apollo, that's not enough. Musk wants more, not just to land again, but to build, to prove that today's tech can achieve what past generations could only dream of. Before we dive into the details, let's take a quick look at the overall plan and where things currently stand. SpaceX is developing a specialized version of Starship called the Human Landing System, built specifically for moon missions. NASA awarded SpaceX a nearly $2.9 billion contract to develop the vehicle, and so far, about 65% of that has already been paid out. This Starship variant is set to serve the Artemis III mission. In that mission, Starship will land NASA astronauts near the moon's south pole, where they'll conduct moonwalks and explore areas that could become future lunar base sites. They'll also deploy a robotic rover to scout the terrain, collect samples, and run critical experiments, all aimed at evaluating whether a long-term moon base is truly feasible. Of course, all of this depends on the human landing system being fully assembled and tested. So far, the project seems to be moving along well. While SpaceX hasn't revealed much about its progress, leaked photos from earlier this year showed what looked like HLS hardware inside the Star Factory, including a massive white structure with a modern, industrial design, possibly part of a dedicated access hatch. Earlier, NASA also shared images showing their collaboration with SpaceX to test a prototype of the HLS elevator system. This included a full-size basket section with working mechanical components and a simulated crew interface. The test team provided feedback on the elevator's controls, including door latches, ramp deployment systems, cargo space, and how the system handles while moving along the vertical rail track. But that's not all. Another crucial step is orbital refueling. In space, two starships dock, one as a tanker, transferring mostly liquid oxygen. For moon missions, SpaceX sends up the lander first then several tankers to fill it up before the journey begins. It's a complex, high-stakes technology Musk has promised to demonstrate as early as next year. All right, now let's get to the heart of it, the plan for Moonbase Alpha. To build a 500-square-meter Moonbase Alpha, about the size of a typical two houses on Earth, we'd need around 1,000 tons of materials, maybe less with a more minimal design, but Building on the moon is no small task. It's tough. It's risky. That's where Starship comes in. The human landing system variant is an absolute beast, with a total of 42 Raptor 3 engines, 33 on the booster, 9 on the lander. Thanks to that raw power, Starship can deliver up to 200 tons to the moon in a single flight. That's double what the legendary Saturn V could manage during Apollo. So, to haul in just enough material for one moon base alpha, 
we're probably looking at five Starship missions. Once HLS touches down, all construction materials will be offloaded to lighten the ship, paving the way for a crucial next step, placing the ship in a horizontal position to serve as the foundation for a moon base. Some unneeded parts, like auxiliary systems, might be removed to lower the center of gravity. The fuel tanks and cargo bay will stay lightly pressurized to maintain structural integrity. To safely tilt the ship, robots or automated systems could help position it on a stable surface, possibly reinforced with moon dust, to prevent rolling and shield against radiation. Then, any leftover propellant will be pumped out for storage, and the now empty tanks and cargo bay will be converted into living space. It's about 800 cubic meters, offering more than twice the habitable volume of the entire ISS, which is just only 388 cubic meters. Once the tank processing is done, insulation and radiation shielding will be added along the inner walls. The interior will then be divided into functional zones to support astronauts' daily needs and scientific missions. Finally, cables and pipes will be installed for essential systems like communication, power, ventilation, and water distribution. Then, astronauts will begin the journey surveying the terrain, especially near the moon's south pole, where frozen water could lie hidden in shadowed craters. Robotic explorers like NASA's VIPER will help scout for vital resources, laying the groundwork for construction. The goal? A base built underground. To shield against cosmic radiation and micrometeorite impacts, living and research areas will be carved beneath the surface, using natural lava tubes or artificial tunnels. These shelters will be reinforced with 3D printed structures made from lunar regolith, providing thermal stability and safety. Scientists plan to turn that regolith into geopolymer concrete. Even the water from ice, or, believe it or not, urine from astronauts, could be used to mix the material thanks to its urea content that boosts flexibility. It's all about building smarter, lighter, and relying less on Earth. Let's face it, humans alone won't cut it when it comes to building a moon base. Sure, we all picture astronauts in spacesuits walking around up there, planting flags and running experiments. But for real construction work, for moving tons of rock, building tunnels, hauling gear, that's going to take machines. Even with the latest spacesuits, astronauts have limited mobility. It's hard to lift, turn, or do precise work. And the moon's dust, it's sharp, it sticks to everything. And over time, it wears down equipment and even the suits themselves. Then there's the radiation. The moon has no atmosphere, so astronauts are exposed to dangerous space radiation every time they step outside. The longer they're out, the higher the risk. It's just not safe or practical for people to do the heavy-duty work. That's why robots are the real backbone of this mission. To build and run a moon base, we'll need non-stop outdoor operations, digging up lunar soil, moving it, using it for construction and mining. NASA's already testing a system called the ISRU Pilot Excavator, basically a robot that digs and hauls moon dirt. This is a big deal. IPEX is designed to extract oxygen directly from lunar regolith, the dusty soil covering the moon. And that matters not just because we need oxygen to breathe, but because it's also a key ingredient in rocket fuel. By making oxygen right there on the moon, IPEX could dramatically cut down how much heavy stuff we need to haul from Earth. That means cheaper, more efficient missions, and a real shot at long-term exploration and even settlement. If we're serious about staying on the moon, we'll need a whole army of machines to make it happen. Now let's talk about how SpaceX plans to keep people alive on Moonbase Alpha. Well, we all know canned space food, like on the ISS, loses key nutrients over time, especially vitamins C and B. Plus, it's loaded with preservatives, salt, and sugar. Not ideal for long-term health on the moon. That's why SpaceX and NASA are working on growing fresh greens right on the lunar surface. One strong candidate, Arabidopsis thaliana, a leafy plant related to mustard greens and deeply studied by scientists. The good news? It's already been grown successfully in Apollo-era lunar soil at NASA labs. The next step? Growing it in a moon greenhouse with heating lamps and oxygen systems. If all goes well, this little plant could kickstart sustainable farming on the moon, helping astronauts stay strong and healthy in one of the harshest environments out there. But here's the problem. Where will SpaceX get enough oxygen to supply an entire greenhouse? 
when just one astronaut would consume 100 times more oxygen than the plants. Actually, the moon actually has plenty of oxygen. It's just locked away in the soil. Lunar regolith contains about 40 to 45 percent oxygen by weight, trapped inside minerals like silicon dioxide, aluminum oxide, iron oxide, and magnesium oxide. To get it out, SpaceX could use a method NASA once tested, using high-powered lasers to mimic concentrated sunlight, melting the soil inside a carbothermal reactor. That's where the heat breaks the chemical bonds and releases the oxygen. With current tech, we can pull about 0.2 kilograms of oxygen from every kilogram of lunar soil, enough to keep one person breathing for six hours. So, really mining just 100 kilos a day could cover the oxygen needs of a 10-person crew. And lucky for us, the moon's got more than enough to go around. So, that's oxygen, but what about water? On February 27th, SpaceX launched NASA's Lunar Trailblazer into lunar orbit aboard a Falcon 9. It's a small satellite designed to map water and geology on the moon using shortwave infrared spectrometers and the Lunar Thermal Mapper to scan surface temperatures. Unfortunately, it lost contact due to a power issue, but the mission highlights an important point. The moon has plenty of frozen water, especially in craters. Using data like this, SpaceX and NASA can guide robotic diggers or autonomous drills to icy regolith. Especially in places like Shackleton Crater near the lunar south pole, where ice is believed to be abundant. Once extracted, that ice can be melted, filtered, and used as a vital water source for moon base alpha. Once basic survival needs are met, the next challenge is communication. Moon base alpha will likely be equipped with the most advanced Starlink satellites yet. Think Starlink 53, a new generation of satellites roughly the size of a Boeing 737. With a network of these giants orbiting above, we could even live stream directly from the moon. Imagine watching 24 hours of lunar farming, or robots collecting regolith in real time. Pretty wild, right? And if you think about it, nearly every company Elon Musk has founded plays a role in this interplanetary vision. SpaceX is obvious, but then there's the boring company, perfect for digging tunnels and building lunar infrastructure, Tesla, robotics and autonomous systems to support astronauts. And Starlink? Seamless communication between Earth and the Moon. By leveraging the strengths it already has, SpaceX is well positioned to outpace China and Russia in the race to the Moon. At this point, is there really any doubt that SpaceX will pull off lunar landings before 2030? Any lingering skepticism about their technical ability or readiness is quickly fading. These across-the-board advancements speak for themselves, loud and clear. Silencing any remaining doubt about SpaceX's ability to make these bold moon missions a reality.